Hello students, good morning. Today I will tell you about the DNA modifying enzymes. The DNA modifying enzymes are those enzymes which modifies to the composition as well as the topology of the DNA. These enzymes modifies the topology as well as the composition of the DNA. So therefore these enzymes are categorized into two categories. Number one is the composition modifiers and second is the topology modifiers. If we are talking about to these uh, these categories, these categories, so these enzymes, these enzymes, these composition and topology modifier enzymes, either directly uh, affect to the chemical composition as well as the topology. They directly affect to the topology as well as the composition of the DNA, and so therefore they are categorized uh, categorized into two categories. Number one is the composition modifiers and second is the topology modifiers for more further study if you want to go for more further study you should uh, go to the epg part sala my dna modifying enzymes this is the module and from that you will get a lot of the information regarding to these enzymes regarding to these enzymes we if you talk about the uh, these modifying enzymes if we are talking about to these uh, chemically modifying enzymes so these chemical composition and topology modifier enzymes uh, in the composition modifiers are those enzymes they change the chemical composition they change the chemical constitution they change the chemical constitutions and as a resultant what will be happening they require the net gain of either net gain or loss of the covalent bonds and basically these composition modifiers enzymes are the nucleases such as the nucleases methyl transferases, methyl and demethylases, methyl transferases they uh, add to the methyl group and demethylases they replace to the methyl group, they replace to the methyl groups. Phosphatases, the role of phosphatases is to remove the phosphate group and kinases, the role of kinases, uh, the role of kinases is, the role of kinases is to uh, add the phosphate groups and the polymerases, they polymerize and ligases, the role of ligases is uh, and to ligate to ligate to the DNA molecules and the other hand the topology modifiers in topology modifiers these enzymes change the topology of the DNA but uh, there is no net gain or loss of the covalent bonds basically these enzymes are involved in the DNA replication process and basically these enzymes are uh, uh, categorized into two forms topoisomerase first and topoisomerase second if the single stranded cut and seal, this the topo isomer is first, and double strand cut and seal, that is the topo isomer is second. Then we will come to the DNA nucleases. DNA nucleases are the those enzymes which break to the phosphodiester bond of the DNA backbone. That means the, the, the target site of the nucleases is the phosphodiester bond, phosphodiester bonds. And these uh, on the basis of their several subclasses, there is several subclasses that depends upon the uh, their target site that means how they uh, break to the phosphodiester bonds either that basis they they are categorized number one suppose that the, if, if you talk about the exonucleases exonucleases are the those enzymes which degrade the dna strand either five prime or three prime strand mm -hmm. such as the exonuclease first and exonuclease first uh, degrade the DNA molecule 3 to 5 prime direction. The same way the exonuclease 10th also doing the same patterns. But if you are talking about that the exonuclease 7th, so this exonuclease 7th degrade to the DNA molecules uh, in both directions. In both directions means 5 to 3 prime direction as well as a 3 to 5 prime direction. But some uh, another enzyme, this is a recombination J enzyme that decrease that nucleus decrease the DNA in five to three prime directions. Commercially, these enzymes are available. Commercially, these enzymes are available. If you are talking about the endonucleases, so endonucleases are the those enzymes. Uh, these uh, are categorized as the nucleases. They cut to the DNA molecule at the internal sites. Uh, in some examples of the, suppose that the S1 nucleus. S1 nucleus. So S1 nucleus. What the S1 nucleus do? That it it break to the single stranded DNA. It 
it cleaves to the single stranded DNA and single stranded nick is produced in double stranded molecules by the S1 nucleus. And the DNA is first, it cleaves both double stranded DNA as well as single stranded DNA. And the restriction in nucleases, the restriction in nucleases, they cleave the double stranded DNA in a limited number of sequences that is the specifically for the recognition, recognition sequences that you know very well about that in the previous lectures. So now we will talk about that basically these restriction endonucleases enzymes are characterized into either four or three types. So these uh, restriction endonucleases more than 4300 restriction endonucleases has been covered uh, in the for more study, you should go to the rebase.nep.com and that you will get a, a lot of information regarding to this recognition endonuclease enzymes. Basically, the uh, restriction endonuclease second, they are the best because they specifically recognize to the recognition sites. They recognize the cancer sites. And now, uh, another example is exinuclease. One is the exinuclease. It is a subcategory of endonuclease. It is also a subcategory of endonuclease. It hydrolyzes the two phosphodiester bonds at a time. It's exinuclease. It hydrolyzes a phosphodiester. Exi, uh, this is a exi, exi, uh, exi, exinuclease. So now this exinuclease molecules uh, hydrolyze the two phosphodiester bonds at a time. And they are uh, basically these exinucleases uh, are uh, playing an important role in the DNA repair system, the repair system, such as the ABC exinuclease in nucleotide excision repair mechanisms. And then we will come to the some DNA methyl transferases. DNA methyl transferases are the those enzymes which either remove or add, which either remove or add to the methyl or methyl group. From the nucleotides, from the nucleotides of of a DNA molecules. So if uh, these the DEM and DCM methylase, DCM and DEM methylase. That means that DEM methylase means is methylate to the methyl group uh, to the adenine residue, adenine residue, and DCM it it methylase to the uh, methyl group to the uh, cytosine residue. So DAM methylase and DCM methylase. Don't confuse to that, that one because these enzymes, these enzymes, the primary function of this, uh, these DNA methylases is that uh, to add to the methyl groups, to add to the methyl group or the alkyl groups, alkyl groups. Now, uh, uh, these enzymes are also a part of the uh, repair system in DNA in E. coli, basically in E. coli. Uh, in E. coli uh, and these methylase uh, when the DNA sequence is methylated when the DNA sequence is methylated that means it is protected it is protected DNA DNA sequence is methylated then it is protected it is a protected sequence and if we talk about the demethylases uh, demethylases the methylation process demethylases means uh, the function of this uh, demethylases enzyme says DNA demethylase enzymes function is to remove the methyl or alkyl group, to remove the methyl or alkyl group, such as the example the O6 methyl guanine DNA methyl transferase, that is MGMT or G, MGMT, it also plays an important role in the DNA repair mechanisms. So now these, uh, these are the small story of these DNA methyl enzymes. Then we will talk about some DNA glycosylases. These glycosylases enzymes, uh, these are the enzymes they generally recognize to do the damaged base of the nucleotide, nucleotides uh, which are present in the DNA. And what they are doing, they, uh, they hydrolyze to the glycosidic bonds. They hydrolyze the glycosidic bond between sugar and, and the uh, nitrogenous bases. Nitrogenous bases. And then we will come to, come to the DNA phosphatase. The role of the DNA phosphatase enzymes is to remove the uh, terminal 5 prime phosphate groups from the nucleic acids from the uh, nucleic acid basically these phosphatase enzymes uh, these phosphatase enzymes and these phosphatase and kinase enzymes are specifically employed in the uh, dna generally they are employed in the dna cloning process they are generally employed in the dna cloning process but on the other hand sir, 
the role of the uh, kinase enzymes is to add to the phosphate group to add to the phosphate group suppose that if you talk about some dna phosphatase enzymes enzyme suppose that it's alkaline phosphatase so this alkaline phosphatase enzymes requires the zinc ions and magnesium ions and uh, the role of this enzyme is to remove the phosphate group from the pi prime but if t4 t4 tuolinucleotide it needs the magnesium ions as a cofactor and it transfer to the phosphate group from atp to pi prime hydroxyl groups and so therefore uh, this, this is the story of these enzymes so now the, you talk about the polymerase enzyme the polymerase enzymes uh, are uh, involved in the DNA replication process. They are involved in the DNA replication process. Uh, DNA replication process, these enzymes are involved in DNA replication process. Uh, there are, again, there are some subcategories of these enzymes also. They are, uh, these enzymes also, because if you talk about these, uh, these enzymes, so these enzymes uh, and few enzymes are showing the different types of the activities, such as the sub, sub, some are showing the, the proofreading activities, and some are showing the exonuclease activities, and some are showing the polymerization activities. And depending, uh, because uh, the functioning and diversity, functioning on the basis of functioning, uh, functioning, they also show a diversity. Uh, diversity and uh, on the basis of their diversity their rules are also uh, categorized into some different categories then you will come to about the dna ligases enzymes dna ligases enzymes they are showing a ligation reaction ligation reaction is endogonic reaction and what is the role of these reactions is these enzymes these enzymes nick translation is done by these enzymes and uh, these ligases uh, needs a uh, the either ATP or NAD plus because this ATP and NAD plus provides the energy to these enzymes and they create a phosphodiester bond between the base pairs between the boss pairs because of the high prime phosphate and three prime hydroxyl group and so they they produce a phosphodiester bonds then we come to the topo isomerase enzymes the topo isomerase enzymes are those enzymes uh, they uh, they they change the supercoiling of the DNA they change the topology of the DNA molecules they generally what they are doing they generally remove to the super coils and relieving the torsional stress relieving the torsional stress in the dna during the replicate uh, during the replication process so what they are doing they changing the linking number and they changing the linking number and uh, and to relax to the uh, dna molecule to relax to the dna molecule we are we are knowing that the dna molecule is uh, completely bound to each other because it's due to self sealing capacity they are completely bound to each other so if you talk about the topo isomerase enzymes so these topo isomerase enzymes uh, these topo isomerase enzymes are categorized in one first type and second type first type and second type and these uh, topo isomerase enzymes uh, uh, they break the two strand of the dna and rotate the end broken strand to intact and this is the this is done by basically the type first A and B B and type first and B by basically this type first A topo isomerase is present in E. coli and uh, they generally relax relax to the DNA molecules DNA molecules and the same uh, set uh, functioning is done by topo isomerase third they also relax to the DNA molecules by removing the negative supercoils and by that process they increasing the linking number plus one. And topo isomerase second, the topo isomerase second, they increase the linking number by multipliers of two, and they cleave both the strand of both the strands, both the strands during the reaction, and they rotate the both the ends at a 360 degree manner, 360 manner, and reconnect and repeat it. And uh, this reaction is uh, powered by the ATP. That means it it needs the energy. It needs the energy. Me. So now these topo isomerase enzymes, these topo isomerase enzymes plays an important role in in relaxing to the DNA molecules, and they they relieve they relieve, they provides the re, relieving to the uh, stress. They they relieve they provide uh, they plays an important role in relieving to the stress. And just uh, they remove to the strains from the DNA, and that's why the DNA is available for doing the further reactions. If we are talking about the other about PCR, PCR is a of the DNA. So now this is a this is the procedure and by this process you can understand to this. This is a DNA molecule. 
This is a DNA molecule. Here you will see is a five prime to three prime, three prime to five prime DNA molecule. Now uh, your first job is when you are you prepare a PCR reaction for this one. So now what will be happening in the denaturation process? The uh, how the uh, melting temperature is determined? 4 GC plus 280. On the basis of your uh, sequences of the uh, primer sequences, you determine the uh, melting temperature, annealing temperature, extension temperature, extension temperature is 70 degrees centigrade. In denaturation process, what will be happening? The hydrogen bonding, breakdown of the hydrogen bonding between 5 to prime, 3 prime and 3 to 5 primes. Now they are removed. Then what will be happening? In annealing the primer, the specific sequence of primer, forward primer and reverse primer, uh, they bind to the, their specific sequences. They bind to the specific sequences. Then then what will be happening in the extension extension page? The polymerase stack polymerase enzymes uh, translate to this master sequence to this one. This master sequence to this one. Now, now the one copy becomes the two copies. Here you will see the one copy becomes the two copies. In second cycle, now this two copies again two becomes one copy and two copies. Now one this copy produce the two copies. One copy and two copies. Now one copy and this one copy this one copy produce the produced again to two copies one this one and this copy produced again to two copies but third cycle again you will see this copy also produced the, the other two copies and this copy also produced another two copies the same mechanism this copy also produced the two copies by this process as a result of number of n cycles n cycle means they are dependent of the 40 cycles center so you will get the pcr product you will get the pcr product in multiples of this one